guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be taking this composition notebook and we are gonna be turning it into something beautiful. So this is a Dollar Tree composition notebook and in comes William, I'm sure he's gonna ruin my video. Okay, he's gone, now I can finish my video. So we're gonna make something beautiful out of this ordinary Dollar Tree composition notebook. So here are some of the supplies that I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be making a journal out of this. So we have got paintbrush, we've got some Mod Podge. You can get the Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have this huge Mod Podge from Walmart. I've got this um, like rose gold slash bronze glitter for the spine. And I'm using this paper sheet cut apart. This is where the bronze rose gold comes in because I'm going to be using some of these. This is going to be the main cover, beautiful paper. And then this could be some accents or something like that. So this is pretty much the paper that I'm going off of to do the journal. I also have some of this beautiful um, seam binding from my scrap cabin. I love her seam binding. And then I've got a whole thing from the Dollar Tree that I'm going to be using of this eyelash yarn. I've got some enamel dots that I bought at Tuesday mornings to decorate with and then I also have enamel dots that I've made on my own. Okay, so these all these colors all play very well together. And then I have all sorts of pearls and jewels and all that good stuff up there. I've got my glue gun plugged in and we are going to begin with getting this spine done. So what I like to do first, especially on these Dollar Tree notebooks, is make sure that this is trimmed up nice because if your spine is not trimmed nice, then the rest of your book is going to look wonky and yucky. You want to make sure that the spine doesn't have like any hangy bits. And you're just going to go in here with your, I'm going to lay down a piece of wax paper.
Okay, so I'm back. This is semi dry. It's not all the way dry. Hello. Hello. These kids won't leave me alone. Hey, I'm not a kid. I'm 18. You're my kid. I'm not a kid. You're my kid. I'm not a kid. Just like yesterday when Gabrielle was here, kid. she was my kid. And she was like, kid. Mom, I don't even live in the same half of the United States as you. Yes. And we both agree. Me and Gabrielle are not kids. You're kids. Anyway. Love you. Bye. You don't have to say bye like that. Oh. These kids. Karen! She keeps calling me a Karen. Karen. I'm not a Karen. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our seam binding closure, which I love because it's so beautiful. Um, I want to make sure we get plenty of seam binding for the closure because it's just gorgeous. So that seems to be plenty. I need to go get my pair of scissors because right now all I have are these and these are not scissors. These are like rose bush clippers. Yes, please. Did you steal them? I don't know where your pink ones are. I'm serious. I didn't steal those. You probably stole them. No, That's I fine, didn't. You know, always steals my I didn't. Scissors. Don't listen to her. She's a liar. I don't think I Well, lie I always steal them, but... <laughs> See, she's like, don't listen to her, she's a liar. Well, I actually do really steal them all the time, but, but like, whatever. I don't have them right now. Right, okay. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, hot glue this in place like this. Subscribe to Pets and Me. You don't have to subscribe to Pets and Me. You're not required to. Also, don't subscribe to my mom. She's terrible. You need to subscribe to me, though. I've been posting every day lately. She has been. Every She's Monday, been doing Tuesday, an Wednesday. excellent job. I do want to make sure that this is even, so I'm going to go up, let's say, four inches. Actually, let's do... How big is it? It is... Nine and three fourths, so let's do like three, four and a half. Let's do four and a half inches up for the um, closure. Because I kind of want it to meet at the same spot on the front and the back so it looks normal. You know what I mean? And I'm going to use hot glue. I've seen people use. Um, just double-sided tape, but I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't feel. I really do. I don't feel like that's going to be enough. Maybe I'm making the wrong call because maybe when I lay down my paper, you're going to be able to see this through it. That wouldn't be good. That would stink, right? So I hope you can't see the. Whatchamacallit. Hope you can't see the hot glue through it, but we'll see. So again, we're going four and a half up. I'm putting that ribbon closure. I hope you can't hear Selena's music because I don't want to get demonetized because she's jamming in the background. Know what I mean? Well, I was too when I was cleaning my bedroom. <laughs> I don't think I was. No, you weren't recording. I don't think I was recording when you were cleaning your bedroom. No, because I started watching YouTube videos like an hour ago, so. Mm. It was earlier when I was, was jamming out with some uh, disco lights. She loves the lights she got in her room. I have color changing lights. She thinks they're amazing. Because they are. All right, so we got our seam binding on. I love it. It's beautiful. Yes. And now let's put the paper. The Whoa. paper on. Was that your throat? No kidding. That's <laughs> not really weird. Like, mm -hmm. like my spit was coming up, but then it was going down as well. 
All right, I don't want to measure this, so we're going to do no measure, guys. We're going to just lay on some double-sided tape. They sell double-sided. They sell double-sided tape at the Dollar Tree. It's not that good. Um, I think it's amazing. Seriously? Yes. Oh, I haven't tried it before. I'm not using it for this because I think I might be selling this project and I don't... Use Dollar Tree. I only like to use quality products when I'm selling. But, like, she'll use, like, but, the papers and stuff. But, if you are doing this for yourself, feel free to use the double-sided tape from the Dollar Tree. Or you could use... Mod Podge. Or Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Whatever you want to call Mod it. Um, where you could use tacky glue. Oh God, you amazing. could use a tape runner. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So you have a lot of options as far as sticking your paper down here. You could just use Elmer's glue sticks. You could use glue sticks. Yep. But that makes it kind of bubbly. Um, I think it depends on what kind of glue stick you're using. I think if you're using a generic brand, then yes, you could probably run into that problem. Um, but that's why I'm saying, since I could possibly be selling this project, then I want to use quality products. I need the like stickers from the Dollar Tree and stuff totally use. <laughs> yeah. I always add adhesive to my stickers anyway. Even if they're not from the Dollar Tree? Mm-hmm. Yep. I always add extra adhesive to my stickers. and feels like poo. Well, that's because I've been moving around stuff all day. And my desk is really heavy. Hey, can you go get my bone folder over there, please? Why is it over here? Because I was using it for flower, oh, flower shaping. Thank you. I just want to make sure I got all of these on, especially where the... Um, Glitter is and where the seam binding is. I'm make sure I get a good adhesion there. hard time sticking down because of the glitter. So I am going to go along that area with some extra wet glue Tombow Mono just to make sure that we get a good adhesion there because I don't want to leave any chances on my paper coming up because this is going to be such a pretty journal. We can't have it coming apart. I'm putting some wet glue. Here, can you put this over on the table? I said I wanted it, but I don't because I can't. There's, it's just, yeah, it's it's not in there. Yeah, I just. Um, so we're gonna go right here. And we're just gonna kinda hit this area a little bit. Because especially the spine yeah. usually comes up. Well, that's where the um, glitter is. Oh. So I don't oh. want any issues. <laughs> and then I'm going to line up the bottom. Glitter is always an issue. And the spine. Um, before I press down. I 
I like it. And then we are going to go in and really get it stuck down. Now, if this was a bright color, you'd be able to see that I have the tiniest bit of composition book showing right here, but you cannot see that because it's literally the tiniest bit. But let me show you what I like to do on my composition notebooks that kind of blends everything together and makes it look cohesive even when you have the tiniest bit of blemish going on. So first we're gonna take care of this by trimming it. Now you need to be careful because you have your seam binding here and you don't wanna go across here and cut your seam binding off. So. We're going to use our X-Acto knife with a brand new blade because we don't want to be pulling and tugging. Always when I'm doing something for commission or really any time, I like to use a brand new blade because I have so many of them. This is my bin of new blades. I got this off of Amazon. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but there were like a zillion blades for a very little amount. They're very thin blades and they're not made by Exacto. They're an off brand. They're not the best quality, of course, because there's like a million of them. But I think it's a great deal because you get so many of them and you can just change your blade every time you start a new project. Make sure you dispose of your blades properly so nobody gets hurt. You don't want to leave blades laying around. Somebody's going to get hurt. I'm going to get my mat out so I don't damage my area here. going to put some pressure and cut right along the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same, being very careful of that area with the binding. Just a little bit of pressure will take paper off. You do not need to go hard. You do not need to go fast. Just a little bit of pressure. Watch where you're cutting. Don't cut the book. Go slow. And then when you get to here, go in with your scissors and snip it right across. Ross, so you don't bother that area right there. I'm going to go in with my corner chomper. I have a cheap little corner chomper that I got a long time ago when I first started crafting. I don't even know where I got it from. I think I got it from like Benjamin Moore or something like an old craft store that's not even open anymore. Um, so yeah, it looks like going for a walk. All right, love. Um, so if you don't have a little corner chomper, just use your scissors. See, I just cut into the book a little bit. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop and readjust myself here. Make sure I don't cut into the book, but I want to make sure I'm cutting this straight. There we go. Okay, this looks gorgeous. Okay, but we're not even 
we're not even on to the good stuff yet. Let's keep covering it. So let's go and do the inside. Um, what do we want to do to the inside? I'm gonna do this to the inside. That would be really pretty, wouldn't it? Um, I don't know. Let's see what else we got in here. What other page do we want to do? Ooh, I like that black. That is very classy. Like, super classy. Ooh, and look, I'm... Actually, you should not open the book while it's still wet because you will crack your spine. Note to self. Note to self. Don't open the book until it's dry because you'll crack the um, glitter spine. See how you can start to see that it's cracking because it's still wet. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it dry completely before we go any further. So, we're not going to do the inside, we're going to do the cover. Okay, well we're just going to, we're going to do the front while we wait for that seam to dry. Yes we are, we're doing the front. Okay, so what I want to start with is I kind of want to start with this eyelash trim right here. And I kind of want this eyelash trim to go, do I want it to go like this or do I want it to point the other way? I mean, does it matter which way? It points. No. Because I kind of want it, maybe I want it like two, two of them, like that. That's really pretty. Maybe I'll go around it. No, I'm not gonna go around it because then I'm gonna end up opening the book again. I think I'm gonna do this.
Okay, guys, I think I'm going with this, but I'm really torn about going with this one. I really like this one. I should go with this one, shouldn't I? Because this one's just flowers on top of flowers. I should go with this one. Or should I go to Cultivate Kindness because, or Enjoy Today. I like Enjoy Today too, or Stunning, or just Love. I'm so confused. All right, I'm doing the butterflies. And then I'm going to make it pop by mounting it on this. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. It's so pretty, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So we're using double-sided tape again. This is going to be hard to part with. <laughs> Don't you love those projects that you do that you're like, yeah, I'm going to sell this one. This is definitely going on Etsy. And then you get done with it and you're like, mm, I could totally keep this for something I know I could. <laughs> this is going to be one of those projects for me, I bet. I'm going to be like, I know I could keep it for something. So this video is long enough, but just to let you know, these little decisions that I make, like right here, I sped up four times. And the reason I did that is because I looked at the timer while I'm editing. It took me seven and a half minutes to decide how to put the front together. So even though the videos are long, it actually takes me a lot longer to put together my projects because I'm so picky about what I want where. So that's just the creative process when you get into a project and you're like why is this taking me so long and it only took her like an hour no it didn't take her only like an hour um, you're watching an edited video and this probably took me like four hours to do um, because I edited and sped through the creative process so don't be discouraged if it takes you a long time to come up with your layouts because that is, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the creative process, go with it. That's it right there, truly madly deeply. So there's a lot of parts of this video where I fast forward and put some music in just because the kids were home, they were getting their snacks, they were talking to me, we were just kind of hanging out together. So um, there was a lot of talking in the background that I had to edit out. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing while I fast forward and put music to it, please ask me. Um, I just don't make the kids be quiet or anything while I do videos because this is their house too and we're all stuck home together so um, they sometimes have friends over and I'm just not gonna I'm, I'm right in the middle of the house the way that our house is set up is I don't have a room to go to to do my editing or my recording or anything I'm literally right in the middle of the house um, so it's kind of a free for all around here. Um, when I'm editing, I try to take some of that background chatter out by putting music to it. So like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Just ask me down in the comment section and I'd be more than happy to answer you.
Where did I get all these little things? Did I get these at the Dollar Tree? Those? Oh, no, I got them at Joann's. That's right. Yeah. Or no, Tuesday mornings. Not Joann's. I remember. So the joke around here is that Hannah's like quality control because whenever I'm doing a project, I run it by her first. Um, and sure enough, quality control said that they needed little gems at each corner. So that is why I'm in adding these little gems because quality control said that um, it needed it. So there you have that. So freaking cute. Um, I mean, really, I can't even. This is so cute. I love it. So now it's time to go in and cover the inside of the front cover and if you've ever seen me make my journals for some reason I am just in love with the way that this ripped paper against each other looks so that's how I always do it I mean sometimes I'll go in and put you know just a flat piece of paper but it's not very common for me to do that for some reason um, the inside front cover is always this ripped paper look just because I did it one time and <laughs> I just fell in love with the way it looked so that's kind of like my thing now. That's how I do the inside front cover. So I wanted to get three pieces of paper that play really well together. And then um, I'm not cutting them down to size because like I said, this journal is not a cut down to size. I'm just kind of free hand and everything. But I'm just using it. I'm just cutting it down to be able to work with it a little bit better. Um, so that's why you see me cutting. It's not being cut to an exact measurement. I'm just cutting it down so I can work with it a little bit better. And then I'm going to lay them out to the way that I want them. And then I will just rip them um, because I like the hills and valleys that the rip creates. And then I will lay them out. So you have to remember if you're doing this rip textured look, you have to work backwards. After you lay it out, you have to work backwards and lay the first paper down. You have to adhere the first paper down and build it up. Otherwise, your layers aren't going to appear properly. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm laying the first piece of paper down and then I'll layer the ripped papers on top so you get all the... the um, the layered look from the ripped papers and I will use this tape for the straight edges but then I go in with my wet glue when you get to the ripped edges because I want to make sure that all the ripped edges get a nice adhesion down there I don't want anything lifting
So here the tape is on all the straight edges, but then I go in with the wet glue, and this is the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue that I like to use um, for the ripped edges, and that way everything gets adhered down nice and solid and nothing lifts. And just go over it with your bone folder to make sure that you get a good adherence between all the pages. And since I didn't measure, I do have to go in and clean everything up now. So now I have to go around the edges and I have to clean up that bottom because like I said, I didn't cut it to a certain length when I cut down the pages. I just cut down the pages to make them smaller to be easier to work with. So now I'm going in and cutting them flush with the book. And honestly, you guys, it took me a while to be able to use an X-Acto knife with a composition book. I kept cutting into the composition book. So it'll take some time. Okay, so now this is your choice. If you wanna add a pocket on the inside of the front cover, I love adding pockets to journals just because if you have maybe something you want to put in the journal but you don't have time right then and there to either glue it in or tape it in, then you can just put it in the front of the journal. If you have a keepsake that you don't intend to um, you know, adhere into the journal, but you still want to keep it, you just throw it right in that pocket. So what you do is you measure out the size of what you want your pocket to be, and then you're going to add a half an inch on each side of the left and the right. So if you're adding a half an inch to the left and the right, it's going to be an inch, and then you add a half an inch on the bottom, because then you're going to give yourself a half an inch, you score, and fold over that half an inch to be able to create the pocket. I'm pretty sure that I just made no sense whatsoever when I explained that. So if you wanna look up on YouTube how to make a pocket, that would probably be a good idea because I'm pretty sure I didn't describe that very well at all. Um, but here I am laying it down. So, Go ahead and look up on YouTube how to make a pocket for a planner and it will it give you detailed instructions. decorate my pockets up a little bit so I'm just going to put this keep it simple which is amazing for a journal keep it simple and then I'm just going to put two little pieces of washi tape on there to appear that the washi tape's holding it up of course I'm going to lay it down with glue also like the way it looks when you open up a journal and the front page isn't just blank it's actually decorated also so I'm just gonna put this beautiful rose that I've been in love with since I saw the paper pack on the front page here And here
here you see me covering the back page the same exact way that I covered the front. I'm just laying down my strips of double-sided tape and then I will take one of these pieces of paper and just lay it down there. That's actually a piece of paper that I used for the inside cover, if you see the rip marks. And so if you just keep your pieces of paper right next to you, wherever you are on a desk, on a table, you can keep reusing those pieces of paper over and over again for this project. And then you just, like I said, cut it with the X-Acto knife or your blade, whatever you're using, and you don't even have to measure it. This is like, I mean, I hate to say foolproof because yeah, you could mess it up, but just go real light with the knife, your utility knife, and go slow. And as long as you do those things, you'll be fine. You can't, you know, you can always go back and, and you know, keep going again and again, make different strokes with the blade. You don't have to go, you know, super hard. And that's where you're going to make mistakes because that's when I used to make mistakes is I would go really quick and really hard with the blade and then I'd end up cutting into the composition book. Just go super light with the blade and just go super slow and it doesn't matter how many times you have to go over it again, at least you'll be getting it right. So those are just my thoughts. I'm just covering the inside of the back here and I don't pay as much detail as I do to the inside front cover. This is just gonna be a plain, you know, one sheet of paper, um, just because you don't see the inside of the back as much as you do the inside of the front every time you open the book. So this is gonna, of course, be done nice looking, but it's not gonna be the three ripped pages and everything like that. It's just gonna be a single sheet of paper. my loves we are done we have turned a one dollar composition notebook or 50 cents if you go to walmart right now into this beautiful journal and i actually went a step farther and made a bookmark that matches this journal and it just brought it another level up because i have danglies hanging off of it and it's just amazing so I encourage you guys to get out there and get your 50 cents notebooks from Walmart or maybe after the school sales, I bet they do 25 cents or something like that. Go get your composition notebooks and put together some handmade journals for your friends or um, if you've got craft fairs coming up, I don't know if they're going to be doing craft fairs this year. That's a good question, right? Um, virtual online craft fairs maybe I don't know but anyway get out there and get yourself some composition notebooks and turn them into some beautiful journals like this I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to chaotic mom come back for some more videos all right guys see you next time bye